Canyon Creek, and we're pleased to announce that we're starting our podcast. Very exciting. So I encourage you at this time to please join us. Um, we're going to be having hard conversations, but you know, it's all right. Let's get comfortable. Let's get real. So my name is Lauren, and I'm part of the praise band here. Um, I played the electric guitar. Let's go. And, you lead know, guitar. Lead guitar. It's so exciting. <laughs> but anyway, uh, for this podcast, I, I really wanted to join this project because it's exciting, you know. Um, I see that church is more as a routine. And, you know, I feel that it's important to make those connections with the community, with one another. And, you know, I wanted to, we, we actually wanted to take that extra step, go the extra mile and get to know everybody, you know. And it's very exciting to start this project with you guys. And, yeah, especially with COVID so prominent in our lives, you know, it's, this is a spiritual awakening. So I believe that it's important to just share that faith with one another in the community and create a safe space that we can have these hard conversations. Like, you know, we're here. We're here for you guys and for each other. So I just think that's important. Um, also, we wanted to make a project that really takes the Bible and translate, like, translates it into a way that we can actually take it, understand it, and apply it to our lives. Excuse me, I'm running out of saliva. <laughs> but it's all good. So we wanted to basically euthanize the Bible to a point where we can actually understand it and apply it on, on a day, daily basis, you know, because, you know, the Bible is kind of like the oldest book. What's, oldest book in the world. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to understand at times, but that's what we're here for. We wanted to make it for you guys, so... And I'm, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to step in for a moment, Lauren, because yeah, I, you, sure. said, you said something that was, that's very powerful, and I would like to make a pause in that moment. You said yeah, you, sure. we're going to euthanize the Bible, um, and that's, a, that's an awesome term, euthanize. Um, and I, I, you know, what we're talking about here is, is the way that uh, many times they have taught mm -hmm. us the Bible, the way that they have shown us the Bible, and then when we come into the Bible, we discover it's different. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And so we want to kind of euthanize those ways that, you know, that... that that really have made us feel guilt and shame instead of joy and, and reconciliation. Yeah, that's a big word, reconciliation. You can explain that. But I was going to say, who, who are you? Because I don't think you've told everybody Ah, that's are. right. I haven't told. <laughs> He's a very, <laughs> I, just, guy. I just jumped in the conversation because it was powerful what you just said. And so I'm, I'm, Peter, Cas I'm Peter Casillas, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm one of the campus pastors here at Kenny Creek Project. So that's me. Love it. Um, so I'm Ian. Um, I'm the one that just caught Peter in that, and now I need to say it. I am interning here at Canyon Creek Project, um, and i from Arlington, and uh, I remember um, these introductions can be hard sometimes, but uh, I remember one time I told someone where I was born in a hospital. Oh. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I told them what hospital oh, I was yeah. born in. So I'm glad I didn't just Wasn't do that. Was that in the profi uh, professional setting too? The po yes, yeah. it was. <laughs> the point is, we're gonna get to know each other better. But for now, I'm Ian. And we're gonna, we're definitely gonna mess up a lot. Um, I'm Sadia. I am the the lead worship leader, huh? The the worship leader. I also got dyslexia. But um, I'm the worship leader here at Canyon Creek Project. Um, I did not grow up in the church at all. I actually um, am very new to the faith since I was about 16. And I am just now turning 22. So it's a good, it's a good while, but definitely not as much as uh, most people get yeah. the opportunity to know Jesus. Um, but I definitely want people like me to become more prominent in the church because... We are living in a world of just um, change, of, of crisis, of just, I don't, like Lauren said earlier, it's a spiritual awakening. And I really want to bring people in. I, I start, or we started this, and the reason why I wanted to join so badly is that I wanted to make Christianity, I wanted to make the Bible um, more, what's the word? Accessible. More accessible, yeah. more um, like Comprehens comprehensible, comprehensible, yes, <laughs> um, because I, even, even to this day, I don't even know what the heck some people are talking about when they say, oh, we're going to a Sabbath meeting or something, I don't, I don't know what sure. that means sometimes, and so I want it to be more, um, like, I want it to be a more common language, I want it to be more accessible to people who don't have the option, um, because faith and, and God is, the easiest access that you can actually get. It's easier than walking into a park and to a public place. 
um, because you can sit in your you can sit in your living room and just he's there. Yeah. So. You guys were diving into um, your whys. I thought that was really cool, and so I should share mine. So, for me, I grew up in a like very like Adventist home. Um, grew, you know, I grew up going and if to church. People don't know what an Adventist is. Yeah, so Seventh Day Adventist very... denomination of Christianity, mm-hmm. and so I grew up in in a place where um, you know Jesus was was talked about a lot, and um, I have amazing parents, but. Uh, they are. They for are. me, that that was the context that that um, that I grew up, and that's how I grew up seeing the world. Um, and for me, something that I have found over time, being in church, um, and then especially, um, I, I've actually started um, like a theological degree mm-hmm. um, after my undergrad. But one thing that I've that I've been finding is that, um, like no matter how good your beliefs are or how like like solid things can seem, like life can be confusing. And so for me, I, I found in different places um, where I've just been so confused. It's like, like, who is Jesus? What is this really about? Right. You know, because whenever what I have believed crashes into real life, I've had those moments where it's like, whoa like like what is this because the the nice answers and the the things you know that are just like in my head those 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 things that i've been taught they they just weren't doing it anymore because of what i was experiencing and for me that that's a big reason for like for me of wanting to have this conversation and wanting to be a part of this is because i don't think i'm alone like life really can be confusing and it's like what's important what's not how do I live my life Mm -hmm. can I say something about that like Ian like I agree where I I understand where you're coming from I came from a very traditional church my family is Seventh-day Adventist as well and that's also like part of the reason why I wanted to join this podcast because I wrote a point here and I totally forgot to bring it up but I think it's very important that man changes God does not you know Mm -hmm. like with the the ever-changing world how crazy and it's not predictable, you know. I just think that it's important to just know that God, He's always constant, and um, that kind—that's kind of what we're here for. Like I said before, like we're translating to the Bible and make it more accessible and more understandable to this generation. Because sometimes, like I've experienced it too, that sometimes the traditional way or like the older ways maybe not easily like heard or understood with the ever-changing um, what's the word generation. And so that's why I'm just very excited for this podcast. I think you, know? you said something really important there, um, and feel free to jump in at any point. But I think that sometimes, um, sometimes a church can actually make things more confusing. Mm. That's 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 what that's, I've found. That's, that's, <laughs> but it's so true. It's so prominent, and like especially with like not growing up in a church and coming to like something that is already confusing, like something that's very new. Tell, um, tell me more about that. So you t- tell us a little more. So you about which part? <laughs> well, about like coming in. So you you come into church like with no context or like what what were you told? What did what did people? It was it was so I actually my first church experience was a Presbyterian church and then I went to a Methodist church that I became very prominent in. Mm-hmm. Um, I started doing leadership meetings. I became president of a conference, um, like a youth conference, of course, because you know I was only like twelve. <laughs> but um, <laughs> like with that. I was told a lot of different things with this church. Um, luckily, I came into a very, very like good church. They more preached about the love of Jesus instead of like hellfire and brimstone kind of thing. Sure. So for me, it was very, it was easy for me to fall into that because growing up, I was um, like I was very abused. Like I had a very, very hard, hard um, like living life. Sure. So as a child, when you have to worry about your food, when you have to worry about where you're sleeping, you don't have a chance to dream. You don't have a chance to actually think about, oh, am I going to graduate or am I, like the little things. And then you definitely don't think somebody out there loves you as much as Jesus does. Wow. So whenever you go into a place and whenever you go into like a church where a, a bunch of people and don't get me wrong, there are like there are some bad people out there. Like, and, sure. of course, but like where you go into a a place where everybody's so like-minded and they all preach and they show you this love of Jesus Christ, of somebody who is a father figure, which I don't have a dad. So I don't like, I didn't know what it is to have a dad, but he is, he is the father that I never had. He is the, the like 
just everything that yeah. you could ever want. And um, I know for me, it was just a personal experience. Um, for other people, it's definitely it's definitely a personal experience. It's a walk of faith. But when I came in, um, it's just a whole lot of this. It's a lot of terminology I didn't understand. Yeah. And so, and then especially not reading the Bible, not going to like Bible bowls. I didn't even know what the heck a Bible bowl was until I sure. came to the Adventist church. But, or like Pathfinders. Apparently it's like Girl Scouts, but yeah, yeah. or Boy Scout, Pat, Pathfinder whatever. Right here. Anyways, <laughs> you know, beside the old Pathfinder, yeah. Beside the point, <laughs> but like you know, it's a lot of terminology that I still somewhat don't understand. Like I'm still learning. Sure. Um, and coming into a place, I'm sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> no, yeah, no. But I'm pretty sure I hit the no, point. No, that was perfect. I was just asking you like what what that experience was. Yeah, be. it's very confusing. It's very like, it's just it's like going through puberty. I'm so serious. It's like, like even my own puberty wasn't that confusing. And this is still very confusing. And like going to very like conservative churches or going to different churches where a pastor or the church itself doesn't sure. show the love of Jesus, it makes things more confusing. And then you always wrestle. Like the reason why we're here is we really, all of us really want to wrestle with God. We want to wrestle with the fact that these, these are hard times. These are hard conversations that not a lot of people know to have or have the courage to have. Sure. But we are going to have those conversations so like, we can at least start a conversation sure. for somebody that's listening or watching. You know, as you say that, the, the imagery that comes to my mind is the story of Jacob. Mm. Um, J- and Jacob, his name himself, was he's a liar. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, and it's so, in Genesis, right? Yeah, it's in Genesis, right there in Genesis, in the in the first, not in the first chapters, but kind of in the middle chapters after the story of Abraham. Um, and so J- Jacob has this moment of wrestling with God, and and he he and it, you know it, it, it. I love that moment because God, you know, takes the opportunity to allow this person to wrestle with him. Hmm. I mean. God can dominate him easily. You know, we're talking about USC action. It's like, sure. me, it's like me fighting John Cena. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's not, yeah, he's down. But God, God, allows, God allows that opportunity for, for him to wrestle with so Jacob can finally understand the reality of his nature. You know, and I, I think, you know, words like confusing, words like, you know, not understanding or... or uh, or things being too churchy and things like that, you know, is I think it's a healthy, a healthy dialogue because it allows us to open the opportunity for true dialogue, genuine dialogue to happen, you know. Oh, for sure, um, yeah. And and I, I came specifically. I came from a uh, from uh, from a Hispanic culture, right? And uh, and my ch- my church that I grew up was really really conservative. Let me give you a picture of conservative. My mom one time went to a park. And I never forget this imagery because I saw her and I was thinking to myself, this is, this is Puerto Rico, by the way. It's hot there, you know. And she has a shirt, right? She has pants, right? She has a skirt, uh, you know, on top of her pants. And then she has a long shirt that reaches almost to where her skirt reaches. Oh, my goodness. And so this is what was required for for the females of the church to play in the sports or to participate in the what? game like, sports? and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll yes, be yes. so sweaty. Yeah, yeah. So so you know so there's a that's a, that's, that's an example, you know, of, of, of a lot of things that, you know, that you grew up with, you know, and um and so you don't have the the ability to have a conversation of wrestling. Hmm. Do I really believe in you, Lord? Uh do I really believe you when you tell me? Hmm. And do I really believe you, Lord, when you say you love me, that you saved me, that I'm free? Uh, do I really believe that that shame will be taken away? That mm-hmm. you know that I, that I'm really your child, you know? And having that conversation, hmm. uh, and and if you had that type of conversation, then it was met with, uh, uh, no, God loves you. You need to understand that. Bottom line. Oh, wow, you, you don't know, even have the option. And so you know, uh, I think I think we see this. You know, even even God, and, and I forgot what's, where was the verse specifically, but it says, come and reason with me. Hmm. Let's have a conversation. Let's mm-hmm. really talk. You know, mm-hmm. Come from your perspective and let me share with you. You know, kind of. Because what I love about this is that God has never intended to manipulate to us into believing him or mm-hmm. believing this whole 
scenario. Did I say the word? Wrong? Yeah, manipulate. It's a manipulate. Manipulate. <laughs> manipulate. I have issues. <laughs> can I can I say something? That yeah. was a really good point. Like it, you're anyway. So like when you said something about like the healthy dialogue of like wrestle and like all that, mm-hmm. I think in this generation and like also generations like before us and everything, I think that people are wrestling internally, like to build up that courage to actually get acquainted with a faith, not even just the Christian faith or like any faith, but like I'm speaking on our Christian so faith. like searching for something. Yeah, and like I, I think that people are afraid because most churches kind of like focus on the very doctrinal aspects of the Bible. Like you said, hellfire and brimstone and mm-hmm. it's God's grace that Oh, it's like, oh, overpowers, how are you, you know? sinning that you can go to hell instead of power? Like you're the love of Jesus. Lauren, yeah. what's kind of, um, what was kind of that experience for you? Like how, like, what was that? Because you, you mentioned that you grew up in, in kind of those type of areas or maybe it wasn't as healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, how did, like, what's been that progression, that journey for you? Well, like I said before, I came from a traditional church or a traditional Adventist church. And um, I was very excited to, like, invite my friends, like, from school, from work, wherever, you know, because I really wanted to share the faith with them. Mm, yeah. But when I was younger, like, of course, my mind was already molded into, like, those values that I was brought up with in my home. And then I was very young also. I didn't, I wasn't aware that, you know, I wasn't very aware that people were brought up in, like, different uh, morals and values and everything. So whenever my friends came to church, they kind of told me, they were like, oh my goodness, is your church judging me or something? I'm like, no, no, no. Like, of course, I was very blind to how they were feeling because I was so used to it, you know? That's why I said that churches may seem like scary at first because it's so, it may seem judgmental at the beginning, you know, when it's God's grace that should really be focused on, you know, they, like you are forgiven, you are loved, you know? And then that's why, that's why I'm very... I, I used to be a little, like, scared to bring people to church because I didn't, I didn't want them to feel judged because mm. I didn't feel judged because I was so used to it being in that setting, you know? So just, like, going back how you're kind of wrestling internally with building up that courage, that faith, to actually get to know a faith, especially mm. the Christian faith. So that's my whole spiel on that. <laughs> that's, that's very powerful what you just said right now. You know, getting used to mm-hmm. something that is really not a God thing, mm-hmm. you know, get... Well, yeah, that, yeah. that's that was you know I yeah. I want to I want to point that out because that's very powerful stuff you know how many people out there you know uh, who are co- going to church you know and and they have just gotten used to that culture just used to that you know this is the way it happens you know um, Andy Stanley says something very interesting and, and he says it in a different context but I'm applying it to here. Um, mm-hmm where he talks about how sometimes we, we get used to things and then we bring somebody in and, and we don't see the, what they're seeing. We're right. blind. And, yeah, yeah, we're kind of blind. And so he, he makes an example that, you know, it's like your house, you get used to your house and how, how it, all, you know, everything's in, in each place. It's an organized and, and you In your mind, you think everything's okay and somebody walks in and is like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of deal thing. And so how many people are, are so used to being judged, condemned, Feeling guilty, mm-hmm. feeling shame. Yeah. Like having, a, instead of having a joyful Christian experience and a joyful experience of knowing God, uh, of having a conversation with God, they have like this, this very heavy, you know, the, and, 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 and they put their, they, they put self boundaries and they have all these assumptions, you know, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's, 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 that's powerful stuff, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, my heart breaks because how, how do we liberate people? You know, it's, it almost feels like we have a double task, you know, in, in a sense. And I and I say this, and I have to include myself because I'm part of the Christian experience, so yeah. I might have it too, you know. Um, right. But but there's like this double task, like how do we liberate those people who who live a Christian life like that? And at the same time, how do we how do we have the conversations in a way that are, that we can talk to our friends who are struggling with the idea of God or struggling with with agnosticism or you know how you know, their, their perspectives of life and, you know, and so on, you know, with, with the Christian life and the Christian God. Yeah. Um, I think for me, yeah, the first step there, um, has been, has been what you mentioned earlier, which is that concept of wrestling, that concept of journey. Um, 
And this is this is you personally fighting yes, with in this, my life. or is it you talking to somebody? No, in in my life. Okay. Yeah, so so in my life, um, I what, what you were saying there about the pressure and the standards and the like. This is what you have to do. This is who you have to be. That has been in many ways my life. Mm-hmm. That has been my internal experience. Um, like, and that that's growing up in. I grew up in a church that was actually pretty healthy. I grew up in a family that was pretty healthy, but somewhere along the way, whether it was through, you know, my own culture, um, you know, American culture, hustle, succeed, or whether it was, you know, business school or, or just probably something within my personality too, there came a point where the way that I related to myself, which was being so hard and judging myself, I started to see God that way. I started to see God as the person that was always all over my shoulder. I started to see God as that, you know, almost, to be honest, like a controlling, like, like, like a controlling parent that was like watching everything I did from like, from what pants I put on to like, you know, at, at any moment, like any, like anything I ate or like, it came to that point where th- that's how I was seeing God. Mm-hmm. And I remember when, when I first ran into that, that concept of journey, that concept of that journeying with God is not this like, like linear progression. It's not about ascending, but it's actually about like just realizing that he's next to you and then walking and knowing that, that you don't, I don't have to go get to God like every other religion. Mm-hmm. God is already with me. That started doing something within me. And I still wrestle so much with so many of the lies that I've believed, but for me, that has been such a liberating, freeing concept because now all of a sudden Jesus is not looking over my shoulder to condemn me. Now Jesus is actually with me in the good moments, in the messy moments, in the moments that I wish like had never happened, but he was there. You said something that, that caught my attention. I, I wonder how many of us have the courage to accept that we have created a God who is not God. Mm-hmm. Um, because when when you were talking about the the standard the standards and, and you started describing in detail what that was looking like, you know, it's it's you have created your own God and how He operates with you, yeah. and and, ba- and that same that simple that, that simple language that you utilize right there is the same thing that happened in the ancient Near East. They created their own system of God and how how they would operate with that God, and and this God looked more human than anything else, you know, judgy and blah blah, etc. You know, losing temper and things like that. And so I wonder how many of us have the courage, you know, to say, "Hey, have I been creating my own God?" Hmm. And and have the courage to go into the Word and and see the God of the Word. You know, I think that really communicates a big reason of our, and we've touched on it somewhat, but of our collective why. So we, you know, in, in forming this, we were having some conversations. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to talk about a little bit about why we're doing this. So collectively, we talked about some of those individual things where each of us are coming from, our backgrounds, but as as a collective, and really as you know, Can You Creep Project, why are like why are we choosing to have this discussion? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, that that's for just... everyone. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's for anyone. I thought you were gonna that continue. Was such a good. I really like that a lot. Goodness, it hits home. It, it really, <laughs> it really hit home. Home run right there. Yeah. Share, share a bit, share a bit, share a bit. I don't want to yeah, miss why are we having that dialogue? Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to miss out that opportunity. What, what hit home? I don't know, just like everybody's different experience, you know, like part of my biggest reason, like why I wanted to join this podcast is because like I've had so many friends, close friends and like very influential people that I've known like in my church, like from a younger age to now. And then, you know, and I've seen them leave the church and that just breaks my heart because like seeing that they were so active and then I guess they felt judged or something I don't know their personal reasons but they left and I just feel like there wasn't something for them in that church that kept them there to stay you know and so I really my 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 hope and my dream for like any church is to have some kind of program some kind of way of connection that is for the youth, the young adult, and, and literally anybody in that church, you know. So I think that's a big reason why I joined this podcast. It's 
because it's something I definitely would have wanted to have when I was coming from mm. like different churches and you know I have a younger sister too she's eight um and I definitely don't want her to like see that God is this controlling manipulative person but he's a father to us he loves us and you know like he's always there and I wanted I want that not just for my sister but anybody like listening out there you know if you feel this way it just like breaks my heart to like see such an amazing in like person to like lead the church because of something that wasn't offered to them so this mm. is for you guys you know mm. so I think overall our collective why is because it's for those people for it's sure. for the people who don't have the opportunity for the people who don't know the language for the people who are struggling at this moment or even continue to struggle or even for people who aren't struggling who just really want to know i say yeah. yeah i know that you've mentioned a few times um your heart so lauren was talking about like her heart for like her friends yeah. that have left because of you know unhealthiness or like different mm-hmm. things where it just wasn't helpful wasn't real um for you, you I, I know you've mentioned before, like, um, it, like about those who have a similar background as you who, mm-hmm. who haven't had that context. Yeah. Can you tell oh, me a little yeah. bit more about that? No, as, like, when Ian and I first, had, like, met, of course, like, we were just getting to know each other as friends and as, um, like, worship leaders and stuff. And I had mentioned the fact that I, I grew up in a very hard situation. I grew up in foster homes. I grew up with... Like, I don't have parents. So, like, I've I've grown up in hard situations where most kids who come from that situation, they, they turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol, they, they turn to whatever because they didn't have the same resources that I did. They didn't have the same um, passion or whatever. They didn't get the same opportunities. Um, and so, gr- like, now me as an adult, I, um, I live my life, I live my worship, and I try to make known to people that Jesus is like you don't have to turn to all of these other things that Jesus is the person that you should turn to because if I did not turn to him I would have been a very very different person Mm -hmm. I would not be here I probably wouldn't be alive I I, it's just a lot Um, and so for me personally I make it my mission to to bring out for children especially for children um, for teenagers, for young adults that don't have the option, yeah. who don't have the resources um, to bring that to them. And if not, to create a relationship with them because people like like me, very stubborn, got a hard head and a big head. But beside the point, um, I got a very hard head. I'm very stubborn. Um, and a lot of kids who grew up in the same situations as me are the same. They don't want to listen to anything that they don't know. Anything new to them is a threat. Sure. Is a threat. Um, so with that, I think what's so important is creating relationships with people, not even going straight on like, oh, do you know Jesus? No, like creating that relationship, like, oh, how are you doing? What's going on? Um, being there for them and showing Jesus in a different way in the light that Jesus showed himself Hmm. to meet people where they are and not, not bring people to where you are because you're walking different faiths. They're at a very different place than where you are. Just how Jesus, he's, he's freaking Jesus. He's obviously, like, we can never meet the standards that he's at. But he himself brought himself to where I am, to where you are, to where Lauren and Peter are um, at any moment. And he can do the same, and we can do the same as disciples, as people, as simple human beings. We do not have to, we do not have to, like, I don't know what the word is. We don't like we meet the people where they are, basically. That that concept of of Jesus meeting us where we are, mm-hmm. um, kind of makes me think of this kind of interesting kind of weird word, that uh, that we talked with that we talked about and maybe invented, um, euthanize. So Lauren, you like nonchalantly mentioned that before, but I'm sure that someone caught that like I what? That. So this is euthanize spelled Y O U T H E N I Z E. So euthanize, right? So put it in the dictionary. <laughs> Lauren, can you tell me a little bit? I think you're the one that first said that word and it was caught us a little off guard. Like, can you tell us a little bit about more what you mean by that, you know, and and especially how that relates to like are like the purpose of this whole conversation yeah so euthanize wow that was that was a great meeting um, <laughs> that was our first meeting. that was our first meeting and 
When I said euthanize, they won't wait. Wait, wait, what did you just say? I said euthanize, as in Y O youth, youth it, you know? Youth and it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, like, how am, I, how, how am I to explain this? Yeah. It's basically like making something that's not understandable or like old, you know, dusting it off a bit and then making it kind of appealing and understandable for the youth. So that's kind of how I came up with youth and eyes, you know, it's like making the Bible and translating it to the younger generation or to those that are eager, like eager to like learn. But it's, you know what I mean? Like how teaching an old dog the same tricks, but better. (laughs) <laughs> that's good that was good this is getting interesting <laughs> so it's not that the old thing right it's not that the old thing was and we and we, we kind of talked about this it's not like the old thing was necessarily bad in the sense of um purpose in the sense of essence you know right. at, at its like deepest level like we're still talking about scripture of we're course, still talking yes. about the bible we have a pastor at this table we have a soon-to-be pastor at this table. <laughs> we'll see. I still have to graduate. But, uh, you know, there's these, it, like, it's it's that, right, that old thing, but then finding a way to put it in a, a language that makes sense. Yeah. Now, yeah. Sadia, yeah. I, I know you mentioned that, um, kind of why that's even important. Mm-hmm. So, like, like, because of where we are in our cultural moment, mm-hmm. but then also where, like, people are, like, especially where youth are. And they're like kind of, you mentioned like a time of searching. Oh my gosh, I love saying it. I loved saying it because as like, as a child, like I I mentioned earlier, puberty, you know. So as a child, (laughs) you grow up and at a certain age, you start form, obviously like you form your own opinions at a certain age. you not just based off of what your your parents say. Um, Basically like, Kids nowadays, it's more like Nike and Adidas or whatever. Like, you grow up and you're like, oh, I like this one over this one. Not because your parents said it, but because you formed your own opinion. And I think it's very important that we know it's okay to form our own own opinions and keep forming them. So, as I say, I don't know exactly what I said about the Sam sampling, but I know it was clever. So, I think it was more like, oh, a lot of kids nowadays go to different churches, go to different events, because they're sampling. They're sampling Jesus Christ. They're choosing and picking what they sure. want their church to look like, what they want their, their Christ to look like. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. It makes so, sense. So, sampling, like, different things of Christian faith, but yes. probably also, like, sampling, like, what is going to give me the good life? Yeah, exactly. What's going to give me, like, what yeah, is and hurting within? Exactly, and a lot of people, it's sad nowadays, like I said, a lot of people turn to drugs, alcohol, they turn to things that aren't there, but people who are searching, searching, like for a deeper connection, um, they really search within themselves, they search within people that they know, they search within pastors, they search within teachers, Um, and with that, like, I don't even know where I'm going with this right now, but, you know what I'm talking about, that's the sampling, that was good. I want to, I want to follow on that, because when I go, when I go to Sam's or Costco, right, and they have those samples, I always, (laughs) always ignore them. Really? I do. You can get a full meal on that thing. I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why, because (laughs) I see them, and I think about all the germs I oh, can be God. around those food. So I cannot get myself to, to grab one of them. And, and only one person, only one person, this was in a Costco, one person was able to capture my attention for me to sample that sample for the first time ever. And I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so, and, 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 you know, so, so if I piggyback on what Seda just said, you know, a lot of people... You know, they're, they're like me, you know, they, you know, they, they look at, they look at church that way. You know, they look mm-hmm. at different church because remember there, we have to separate something here. Okay. One thing, and I'm, and I'm going to step on some toes. It's going to be very sensitive, but, but one thing is church. One thing is God. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so God, uh, I think a lot of people who are disenchanted with God are really disenchanted with the church, oh, yeah. but not really with God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, 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 you know, it's because, and, and, the re, and the reason why is because the church is supposed to be the representative, the, the, the tool, the instrument through which God is presented to the world. So, so if, if the church is in a certain way and they say forget about it and they're say, they think they're saying forget about to God, but they're not really saying forget about to God. Because even as an unchurched, let's say, 
they're still thinking about their spirituality. They're still thinking about God or something out there. Trying to make sense of yeah, life. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and so right now, those people who are there, I mean, they look at church and they're like, uh, uh, you know, they see the sampling. They're probably, uh, there's probably too much germs in there. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? Ooh. I like that. There's probably too much germs in there, and I don't know if I really want to get in there. And so it takes, it takes, and, and I want to go with Sadia here, it takes us going outward. Hmm. Yeah. You know, it takes us meeting them in their ground. It takes us having the conversation where they feel empowered hmm. and, and, and say, hey, we, we want to try a sample. You know? You're... At least reaching your hand out. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You know? That that kind of makes me think of uh, there's a thinker. Uh, it's, it's a little piece of haystack. <laughs> That's very. We don't language. eat haystacks. <laughs> oh my goodness! There's a thinker named uh, Ty Gibson, and he shares a story about um, his interaction with someone who didn't believe in God, and she starts telling him about the type of God that she, you know thought that she was rejecting and it's this god of judgment this god of like you know that that hates certain groups of people and and all these things and and what what she eventually asked him in the conversation like so what are you like 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 what do you believe in and he tells her i'm an atheist if that's the god that that if that is who you think god is I'm an atheist too. I don't believe in that God. Yeah. And I feel like as we have these conversations, it's really important to to contextualize because something that's hit me real deep uh, lately is is thinking about that. You know, what if, what if the people that we think are far from God aren't? What if the people that that like we would think like, oh, they have a certain look or oh, they dress a certain way, or oh, they speak this certain way. They, God forbid, they speak cuss words, all every other sentence. You know, what if it's those people that are searching, that are so much closer to God? Because why? Because they're searching, because they're open, because they're open to possibilities. Mm -hmm. Then the people who say, oh, I, I know exactly what God's about. And so I, I think it's challenging for me to even as we have this conversation, to not generalize people and say, this person's inside the church, this person's outside the church. But remembering that for Jesus, it's what you said, there's a difference between God and the church. For Jesus, like, we're just people. We're creation, we're dust that Jesus breathed in. That's it. Like, all of us. Inside church, outside church, Seventh-day Adventist, whatever. Like, we're just people. Children. Children and daughters, you know, and, and, and people that he loves, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're in no position to judge, I don't know, like, no, no one's perfect, you know, and like... And the thing is, people are probably looking at us that way, too. Exactly. So. Like, I, I do not look like a church person at all. I mean, I guess, I guess now I look a little bit more, but I'm, I'm a little <laughs> edgy. But, like, people look at me and they're like, oh, I don't see you as that. I see you as, like, a druggie and stuff. And like, what does a druggie look like? What does a Christian look like? You know, like, we don't, what, did, what does a Christian look like? Somebody please tell me, because I mm -hmm. don't know. And if, if we see other people heart, like that, exactly, you know? and we can't and, see somebody's and that's, heart. And that's, let, me, let me use this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and, and there's something interesting, because uh, the, the whole issue here is, you know, this, this embodiment, this, this, you know, a lot of people are going to be, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm tiptoeing here, but... Basically, a lot of people will feel uncomfortable with this conversation because they're going to ask, well, where is transformation? That's a big word, by the way. Hmm. Um, where is obedience, which is a word that has a lot of stigma on it, you know. A lot of connotations. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of connotations and so on. And so, so you know, they're going to ask, what, 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 what happens, you know, stuff like that. So, so I think that's an appropriate question, you know. So what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean? What, what is this whole thing about? And I think that's one of our whys. Our, one of our whys is, for me, my why to be here, being here is, is twofold. Number one, it's creating a space, a safe space for us to have a conversation and talk and, and organically talk, you know, and, and not prescribe and, and just, and just, you know, go in and figure it out, you know, kind of deal thing. And, and maybe you're asking yourself if you're a Christian or if you're, if you're part of the tribe, um, 
you're asking yourself, where's your Bible? Where our Bibles are in the phones and so on, so they're here. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, our, our departing point is having a, a, a normal conversation of, of meaning and reason why. My second one is because I, I personally, I, man, my journey with Jesus has been amazing. Hmm. And I have not been the best of kids, hmm. you know. <laughs> so, so I, I had to say, you know, God, God has had some headaches with me. He has had those headaches with me, uh, but it's been an amazing journey. I love Jesus. It's 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 amazing His love. It's so deep. The way He embraces me, the way He walks with me, the way He understands me, the way He talks to me, uh, the way that I experience Him, the way I see Him in people. Um, it's just so awesome to be to have this joy. And I and I want I want other people to have that joy, you know, and I I don't want to I don't want to share that joy so you can be oh I want to share this joy so you can become you know now I want to share this joy so you can discover, hmm. and discover who is God and who is this Jesus we're talking about, and you yourself can start chewing on these things and you can en enjoy the nectar of this you mm -hmm. know of this joy it's yeah. it's just amazing you know so. Uh, you know, so. that's that's kind of my why, you know, creating the space, the safe faith, the conversation for us to talk. Because one of the things, my my personal why is Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, mm. where where God tells Moses, um, make me a sanctuary. And the word for sanctuary is migdash. It's, it's a Hebrew word. And it has to do with God's presence and less with structure. Mm. And you see throughout the scripture that this Mikdash is moving. It's dynamic. It's, it's, it invades darkness. It's transformational. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, in the New Testament, you see Jesus moving around and, and just being that, you know, moving, dynamic, mm. invading darkness, being transformational, and creating those spaces for people to finally see, oh, you are God. Mm. this is what it is. Mm. You know, I think about the Samaritan woman and her perception of what God was for her and how she's going to this, to this, uh, this place where you get, well, I forgot the word there. The, the well? The well, thank you. <laughs> she's the going, well. The well. Who, going, who is the, give a little background about the Samaritan woman though, because for people who don't yeah. know who that is. Samaritan woman is a story in the Bible and, and she's this, this woman who, um, who had, she had had like five husbands and, and she had one currently and that was not her husband either. Yeah. So she, she got had, around. She got around, right? And, and, and so she's going to this well and she's going like at, at you know, at, at a time where nobody else goes to the well. So that tells you that she feels an outcast, that she feels far, far away. Sure. And, and what does Jesus do? Hmm. He walks up. Jesus him. goes during that time sits at the well and then opens up with a flirt he says wow, give me flirty. a drink and give me a drink was the famous phrase of the well when a guy went, went to a girl and said hey what's up seriously well, instead of saying what's up give he was me saying, your number <laughs> give me a drink give me a drink and the girl knew immediately this guy means business with me you see, and her reaction was, "Oi, what am I? You're a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. That's it's weird. It's wild." You know, and so so this is Jesus comes in into her world. Yeah, you know, transformational, moving, dynamic, and all of a sudden, after the conversation, she gets to see Jesus. Uh. And when that happens, guess who becomes the first? And this is a big, a loaded word: a proclaimer, a announcer evangelist the tribe calls it sure. that way uh you know in jesus time it was this woman you know she she it's says like, check out this guy he's yeah. told me a bunch of you need to check him out and people come and they're like oh wow and so they suddenly see the picture of god you see and so that's what that's my why you know how 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 we who have had the the the, the opportunity to experience god's joy can create spaces for other people to just have the conversation and have the possibility of experiencing that hmm. with their loaded life. Hmm. I think that's, you know. No, I, th I think you said some really important things there. I think for me, that concept of, of movement is, is really important because it's, I know, and, and feel free to jump in, um, but I know for me, it's been, um, it's a totally different way of looking at faith whenever you see God as being a moving God 
or whether you see faith as being something that needs to be set in a stronghold and put walls around and protect it. In other words, like, it's one thing, and and I remember we we had this conversation Mm -hmm. where it's like, there's two, for me, there's been a couple of ways that I've seen faith. I grew up in a, I, I went to a Christian high school, and I had a great experience, but there was some, somewhere along the way, I picked up this notion that my faith was something that needed to be, like, protected. I needed to put, like, strong walls around it. So we went to things called, like, worldview conferences where they told us how we could, you know, like, argue with or debate, you know, with people that so just very defensive. that aren't Christian, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's, like, very defensive, very, like, ha, gotcha, you know, like, that, those type of things where it's, like, it's, here's faith. And you're about to go to college. And, and, you know, they're very concerned about this. Like, you're about to go to college. And so many people lose their faith in college. So you better be careful. You know, like, so you better, like, go to this. You better, like, you know, read your Bible and all these things. Good things. Yeah. And, and I learned things there. But overall, it instilled in me this mindset of looking at my faith and my relationship with Jesus as something I needed to protect from the outside world. And, mm-hmm. and also something as a god who was static a god who did not move a god who kind of just stayed there so i needed to protect i needed to protect him you know Mm -hmm. because i might lose him where's he gonna go as i've journeyed a little bit something that has been really important for me is is seeing faith as a progressive journey Mm -hmm. a dance a dance with jesus Oh, I'm You're no. Wanted. I would be merengueing only at weddings. Salsa. Only at weddings. That's when I let it loose. But it's, he does for real. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but a journey, a journey, um, where it's like, huh? Like, like God is moving with me, and and not only that, but but faith progresses. I, I don't know if oh, you want yeah, to jump into yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember talking about this like during our first meeting. I remember bringing it up, and it's something that I for some reason, did not realize until I said it and put it into words that day. Um, and it's something that obviously that stayed with me because, you know, I'm brilliant. But no, <laughs> no, no, no. But like, um, like you said, God is a moving, a moving entity, entity, like a moving, not product, but a moving He's project. A person. Exactly. He's, it's just like us, we move all the time. I got ADHD, yeah, I move all the sure. time. But um, like... With that, if you think that your faith is stagnant, you think God is stagnant. Wow. So, for me, I realized going through my, going through my um, years of, like, losing my parents, of going through college, of growing up, blah, blah, whatever I've been through, doesn't matter. But, um, with that, my faith has moved with me through crisis, through joy, through every single emotion I felt. I feel at peace because I know that Jesus is with me. And just because my faith has dwindled a little bit, I know that just because like those seasons, those hard seasons that you go through, like just because you're in a winter, spring is after. Sure. Like the flowers bloom, you grow. You grow from the seasons of depression, of doubt, of all of these things because you're searching, because your faith is moving. It's Mm. getting better it's going through this like time warp of just like events that's happening you know you know you mentioned winter and that makes me think of like death oh yeah because all of the leaves fall right everything looks dead and i think there's a point where it's like and i I, this is hard to say because this is it's been hard in my life Mm -hmm. but there is a point where if we're going to go to a new place, if we really want to say, hey, God, like, I want to know you for who you really are, the God yeah. that we believed in before has to die. And the person that we were before has to die. Yeah. I know, I know, especially, like, when I was a freshman in high school, I was the worst, the worst kid. You would not want to be my friend at all. I, I didn't want to be my friend. Um, I... In that moment, when I accepted Jesus Christ, I had to die. Mm -hmm. Like, not in the sense of, like, you know, my body, but, like, I surrendered myself. I was no longer me. I was a broken vessel. I was cracks and all 
to be filled by Jesus. Does that make sense? So there's one thing, and and it's kind of going, like, that word surrender. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to take a stab at that? Because when I think of, like, surrender, I feel like outside of, like, the the church world, that kind of just means, like, historical like you're like raising a white flag like that's, what does it actually I mean, mean technically that's that's it is having the courage in order to give up something to give up yourself in order for a better technique i guess a better outcome like a better person hmm. a better faith a better um i guess surrendering is basically just giving up yourself for me, at least, it was giving up myself so that I could I could finally get to know Jesus because I'm so stubborn, I'm so hard-headed that I would try to control every situation, every thought, every mm-hmm. everything. Jesus and I needed, really to, I needed to let Jesus control that. I needed to give up myself. I needed to give up control at all points. Control. And let Jesus fill, fill me. Can I say something? Because it's just like, Listening to all three of y'all's conversations, like I heard three common words that really stuck out. It was journey, Jesus, or journey, Jesus, then joy. Mm -hmm. Like in those particular order. I don't know why that order came through, but I'm going to bring back Sam's and Costco once more, I promise. Come on. But like I was just thinking like people. (laughs) Please sponsor us, please. Um, Anyway, I'm just like thinking about like the sampling thing and how Mm -hmm. it like coincides with all y'all are saying. Um, When a person is like searching for God, First off, let me just tell this short little story really quick. Okay, I promise it's relevant. Go for it. But um, one day my mom and I went grocery shopping and I was starving. Okay, and I get hangry. Hungry and angry at the same time. true. So we first went to Sam's and it was Sunday and that's when they give out their samples, right? So I'm walking through. I'm not having a great time, you know. So I see all these samples and I'm eating sample by sample. And it's just like, just like in life you kind of, it's like temporary happiness. Like, yeah, it fills you in at the moment, but, you know, it's not going to, prolong you that long Ooh, mm-hmm. that's good. so like um just like you need a full meal exactly i'm getting there yeah so um i told my mom like mom i'm hungry like i'm sick of this you know like what are we gonna do she's like don't worry we're going to olive garden after this so i said great oh, sponsor, sponsor so, olive garden so basically <laughs> when someone is going through life like no relationship with christ is perfect you know and that's like a misconception like when you're a christian everything's perfect no it's, it gets harder it's, if anything. It's like climbing a mountain, you know, because yeah. everybody's on a different walk. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, a person samples through life, you know, they find temporary happiness in materialistic things, drugs, like just different things. It's It may fill you up in that moment, but it's not going to give you that happiness. And then so when you go through Sam's and you get through those samples, you know, in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm going somewhere after this. Mm-hmm. The end meal is Jesus Christ. You will find that true satisfaction Tasty. in God. So just because you may have temporary happiness at that time, it's not going to fill you up. The only thing that can fill those cracks, feel that, you know, that emptiness inside that you've been experiencing is Jesus Christ. And I, and I know exactly why I had that, that order, you know, those three J's, the triple J's. It's journey, Jesus, and joy. Because you go through a long journey. That's sampling. It's a journey through Sam's, through Costco, through life, right? And then you find Jesus. And yeah. you find Olive Garden. And that's that joy right there. You know, that's Jesus is the whole meal. You know what I'm saying? I was mm-hmm. just thinking about that because those were the three very occurring words that were, like, popping out of everybody's conversation. You just reminded me about something is that I, I got to share. No, <laughs> go it's, ahead. Go ahead. It's not about Sam's. Uh, it's oh gotta share it because it's it's what you're talking about which is like mm-hmm. like this this search for for joy for something and um what that makes me think of is uh the search for the good life right and someone told me recently that um you know in, in church we use this word sin mm-hmm. you know this and, and that kind of remind me uh you use the word control Mm-hmm. And the way that this guy was telling me about control is like, or about sin is like, it's essentially sin is us searching for the good life in a way apart from God. Oh, so we're so all good. searching that's for really the good, good life. And, and the, we have this sense that we should be on a beach somewhere, you know, know, drinking like our favorite drink for me. I, I'd probably at this point, kombucha. <laughs> kombucha. The point is maybe like a chai tea latte. We oh, should be like good. somewhere very like, calm and enjoying life and enjoying each other but instead we're stressed driving to work 
having to do tests and having and and then now we're in our cultural moment with covid and and crisis and division and our hearts can't bear the weight of it. Mm-hmm. That is so our true, hearts yeah. cannot bear the weight of it. So what do we do? We're like, I need to find the good life. So I go to a bottle. I go to, you know, relationships, you know, and going about them the wrong way. I go to these different things because I have to find the good life. I'm sampling. I got to find it. Where it? is it? Yeah. yeah. And it's what you said, which is like, there is a point where we have to choose, and it, I think it goes back to dying. Like, am I going to keep trying to find the good life on my own, or am I going to surrender? Am I going to give up? Am I going to stop being stubborn and say, Jesus, I cannot do this alone. Please show me what life is really about. Take me to Olive oh my Garden. Goodness, I, take me to take Olive, Olive Garden. Garden. Oh my goodness, Ian, you when said something here, so home. good. Um, Wait, your family. What was it? <laughs> You said something about, like, finding the good life. Yeah. And, like, especially with all this craziness, like, all this sadness and everything and violence going on that is so prominent in our lives. Um, I think this really is a spiritual awakening because I feel like at this time people start to question, is there really a God up there? Like, and sometimes... Especially at this time. Especially, yeah. And people start to question their faith. People even begin to hate God mm-hmm. or who they think he is, you know? And... Or they use God as a means of fear. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Or they use him in, in a way to better their situation. Like, if they want to show hate to somebody in any, any race, any culture, any, anything at all, they use him to their advantage. When it's not, it's not that at all. You're supposed to be sacrificing yourself for your brothers, for your sisters. You're supposed to continue to grow, to speak positivity, to speak life. Because mm-hmm. that's who Jesus is. Jesus loves, like, loves you. And that, I think that's what like, we're going to implore our people to do as well. People who are listening, people who are watching, to yeah. speak life, to speak positivity. If you're not speaking Jesus, like, if you don't know Jesus or if you're still very much on the edge of Jesus, just be there for people. Be a human being and just love just love that is our first nature that should be our first nature not fear not anything negative that is what the devil is trying to make us yeah. become and what you said about the good life i think the good life has always just been there it's just 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 so many distractions you know and like part of that surrendering like like the good life has always been offered to us. It's been accessible through Jesus Christ and like Ooh. through everything. It's just there's just been so many distractions, worldly distractions, spiritual distractions. It's just it takes the process of surrendering ourselves to see that good life. You know, it's Ooh. just it's always been there. It just we put a mask on to not see it. It's what we said before. It's 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 an old thing. Mm-hmm. It's a thing that maybe has been like they put like an awkward tie on it and put some interesting music around it, stuff like that. But but it's always been there. It's always been yeah. there. It hasn't changed. An awkward tie. <laughs> Teaching like, an old dog the same tricks. Just in bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I mean, like, that brings up a good point. And like, I know this is something, I, it may just be me, but like in the church, especially in like not growing up in the church, blah, 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 whatever. When I hear people say, oh, I've been saved. Oh, I've accepted Jesus. So I'm saved now. That's that's not it at all. That's not what I believe. I believe I've always been saved. It's whether I give up that control and accept it. Hmm. If I actually accept the fact, like you said, the good life's always there. Are you going to take it? Exactly. Are you going to give up yourself and actually, like, hmm. take that? Sadie, I think you kind of started um, that kind of, like, just, you know, closing our time together. Oh, what were you? Yeah. What, mm-hmm. does anyone have any, like, closing things that they that they want to share um, you know, especially anything practical or just another thought that you want to share as we close our time together. I I think, you know, as I was listening to you guys, the that came to mind was how sometimes we choose to numb um, our emotions or numb, you know, try to block the situations that are happening in some shape or form. We, we always choose to do something. Um, to not be present, you know, in order to free ourselves. And sometimes we have the courage to be present, you know, sometimes we do that. Um, And, uh, you know, as I think about, you know, uh, uh, our lives, our ordinary lives, you know, what what does it mean 
What does it mean to have the courage and say, okay, let me have a conversation about God um, with someone who, who probably doesn't believe or who, who doesn't understand or, or maybe have a conversation about God with somebody who has gone through so much within the same church, you know, in the same tribe and so on, you know. And, and how do we really, how do we, how do we make available or let me use the word of our, you know, our, of Kenya Creek project. How do we create intentional spaces for genuine connections? Mm-hmm. You know, how do, how do we do that? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the, I think that's the challenge of, the, of our conversation right here is how do, how do we, how do we create those, those, those intentional spaces um, for genuine conversations, genuine connections, genuine relationships to take place and take place at their own rhythm. Hmm. You know, um, so I finally stopped and I ate at one of those Costco food sampling things, ones. sampling things, you know, like, because the lady was very, very comfortable to be around. Hmm. You know, and so I finally stopped, and she told me about the product and everything, and I tasted it. It was good. Did I was, you buy I was it? still freaking out. I didn't buy it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you tried it. That was a big but step I in the tried right it. direction. It was a big, big step for having a full meal at Costco. But, I think but, yeah. something that keeps coming to my mind, especially with like us talking, is how can I feel comfortable with being uncomfortable? Because as a Christian or as like just as each other, I know for a fact, like, this is not my, I'm not comfortable. But it's something that needs to be done in order to wow. move in the right direction, you know? So how do you, how do you get comfortable with being uncomfortable? And I think that's something that can be for a further topic, but that is, is a question. Which also embraces the fact that we're not gurus. You know, we're, we, are, we ourselves are, are in the journey. Are yeah. struggling, are wrestling. Yeah, we're, we're, you were gonna laugh at me. <laughs> we ourselves, we're, we're struggling. We're struggling. We're, we're in the journey. We're struggling. So we're learning all this. You know, I I have so many years of, of being a pastor, and and I'm still learning. You know, basic concepts, and because they they become deeper, mm-hmm. they're more profound, and so on. And so I think that's important for all of us that we are just we're 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 like you. We're learning. Hmm. Yeah. Love that. That's the that's I mean that's the whole point of this too. It's not to like this is for you guys, but in in this we're walking together as well. Guru. Guru. You're, it's right. <laughs> He's still on guru. Oh my goodness. He's only loving. <laughs> Come on, Lord. <laughs> Be professional. <laughs> it's because we looked at each other. <laughs> I'm, it's an inside. Anyways, joke. anyways. Guys, um, thank you so much for for I joining us. It. Yeah, for yeah. hanging out. We hope this was helpful for you. And we're looking forward to, to more of the journey. Yeah, yeah. Let's take this journey together, guys. Like, well, we're here. We're here to create that space for you to have these talks, you know. Let's confide in each other. Let's start the conversation, at least. Let's start it. And let's start end it, it like we started it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>